my own experience growing up as a Catholic in Ireland, I, I witnessed both a very hostile church and a very hospitable church. So in my, in my own case, uh, I, I did feel the need to go out and have dialogue with other religions, Buddhists, Hindus, Jews, Muslims, etc. But I never actually ceased to be a Catholic. And one of the reasons for that was I was very fortunate in growing up that I had good teachers. Uh, I grew up as Benedictine monks uh, in Glenstall Abbey in Southern Ireland. And um, one of the first things our religious doctrine teacher, Father Andrew, said to us was, you come here and you think you know what Christianity is. But the first thing I'm going to teach you is all the arguments against the existence of God. So we read Marx and we read Simon de Beauvoir and we read Borbach and we read Nietzsche. And we read all these atheists who said, you know, God's for the birds. Uh, religion is dogmatism and power and domination and misogyny and oppression and so on. The, the heart or heartless word, opium of the people, you know, think, take Marx's uh, Communist Manifesto. So we read all these. And then at the end we said, okay, now, if there's anybody left in this class, we were all 13 or 14, who still has an interest in God, we can, we can have a discussion. We can start Christian doctrine classes. So that openness to the atheist within Christianity was huge for me. And the recognition that Christ himself was an atheist as well as a theist. He was considered a heretic in his day. Um, he, as, as I said on countless occasions, was always a stranger, open to strangers. Uh, on the cross itself, he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He gives up on the God of all, you know, the, the omni-God, the alpha God, omnipotent who can come down and save him and so on. And he says, why have you forsaken me? Because he had to, he had to let go of that God uh, who does magic, who intervenes and, you know, saves his people and damns everybody else. Uh, he had to let go of that in an atheistic moment in order to then say, unto thee I command my spirit. So he's opening himself to a new understanding of of the Father, of God, which in fact is an anatheist moment of disposition and openness to, to a deeper understanding, uh, which then leads to another deeper mode of faith. And we go through that all our lives. So I understood that that was possible within Christianity and indeed within Judaism. So in the stories of the Torah, uh, and in my own case, in the Gospel, I learned again and again that there is this openness to something new, to something, to something strange, to something different, and that faith can allow for that within the church itself. So that if I hear as a Catholic certain edicts coming from the Curia in Rome, say, in the last 10 years or 50 years, I'm not 60, uh, saying, you know, women have no role in the church or, you know, uh, homosexual love is, is, is uh, objectively um, uh, devious um, and, and, and sinful uh, as an act um, uh, or other uh, teachings about the you know, superiority of my church over all others, etc. I simply say, okay, that's the Catholic Church as hostile to gays, to women, to people from other religions. Uh, in Northern Ireland, uh, you know, growing up, I, I witnessed wars going on because my church said that it was the true church and the Protestant churches said they were the true church. And, but the only, the only ultimate uh, peace could come when Catholic and Protestant recognized that they both had a share in the truth. The Catholic was more sacramental, the Protestant was more prophetic, uh, and the Catholics may be more communal, the Protestants more individual, you know, the different strengths, different, different uh, virtues. So I never felt a need to repudiate Catholicism per se, because I see it as a teeming plurality of voices and transitions and a dialogue between what I would call a hostile and a hospitable uh, tendency within the church. And those hospitable tendencies are, as, how shall I put it, aided and augmented by dialoguing with people from other religions. But I never felt the need to completely reject mine and embrace another. Why? One of the reasons being, I don't believe actually any one religion is absolutely superior to another. You can find both good and bad in each 
So I come from my story, I come from my tradition, I know it, I've learned it, it's in my, my blood, it's in my bones. I can bring that to dialogue with atheists and, and theists from other religions, and I can learn from them. Um, so I think that is important. You don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. You can live within your tradition, learning uh, to hear the voices of love and peace and hospitality, and learning to discriminate against the voices of fear and oppression and domination.